Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about a few um, X posts that come from my favorite um, or one of my favorite people on X and one of my favorite people to talk about Cubic and I really want to talk to you about the D app that's, that's launched on Cubic called uh, Quotary and how you can see the potential that it has and the, 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 the potential that Cubic has based off it. So let's get into it. Um, yeah, guys, so the influencer that I'm talking about is this guy called Crypto Dees. Um, I think that's how you spell it, or do you pronounce it. Um, but he's a great cubic influencer. He's also, um, I think, the community manager is is the title he has now with um, with, uh, with CFB, the first meme token on the cubic network. And basically, he's just been talking... <clears throat> about Quotary and how powerful it is. So Quotary, if you don't know, is one of the first decentralized apps that's been released on Cubic. And basically what it is, is a decentralized betting platform and one of the first of its kind. And it could be a really, really big deal. So as he said here, here's a little thread on Cubic's Quotary and why this done right could be absolutely massive for Cubic, for Burns, why it could be the best business investment of your life and how it could change gambling forever <laughs> so um this is what quality looks like right now it's still at a very basic stage but it's you know it's going to it's going to advance a, a lot over time but he said first let's look at the centralized competitor so betfair so what is betfair betfair is a peer-to-peer -peer gambling website that was launched in the uk and ireland and is available in a few other countries around the world as it is peer-to-peer -peer, typically the odds that you get are better than traditional bookmakers so how much does Betfair take in bets? Well, data is not the easiest to get since they merged with a traditional bookie, Paddy Power. But in 2016, the exchange handled 55 billion in bets with 1.7 billion um, on the US election alone. So how much does Betfair take? Betfair takes 5% from winning bets, but adds a premium charge if you're too successful. So for every bet that you have, um, they take a 5% uh, charge if you win and then there's a premium charge if you're you know you have a really really big win how much does quotary take they take 4.5 percent so quotary already takes less and um, from your winnings than than betfair so why is the so why is the bullish for the reasons meant so why is this i think bullish for the reasons mentioned above cubic well this is pretty obvious People who want to bet on a true peer-to-peer -peer gambling website will have to use Q and will be exposed to the project and that will be great for us. So basically, anyone who wants to use Quotary and wants to use a true decentralized betting engine will um, be exposed to Cubic and that, that'll be good for us in general and they'll have to use Cubic uh, Qs, which is the currency in the Cubic network to, to place those bets. So then what does it mean for Burns? Well, let's break down the 2016 Betfair numbers. 70 billion gambled, and then we've got 2% burn. So four, out of this 4.5%, 5% goes to the creator of Quotary, 2% goes to the uh, shareholders from the IPO, and that's how they actually make passive income from this, this app. A uh, really important point there, there's 676 shareholders with any app that's built on Cubic. So... That's 676 people have put a lot of money, like just probably a hundred thousand or something like that dollars, um, put into the shares on this app. And if you think th those shares, those people, the reason that that they want those shares is to earn the passive income from this charge here. So some of those people are really rich people and really skilled people, and for them, they're going to they're going to want quality be successful because you know they they won't make money otherwise and they'll lose a lot of money that they put in to buy to buy their shares so it's really important for them to have this success be successful and they're going to do everything that they can all that 676 people are going to work together and do everything that they can to make this project successful so i'm going to explain that in another upcoming video but i hope you understand how powerful that is to have 676 people decentralized together on an app um, as the shareholders all wanting the project to be successful and all working towards that 
and all earning money if the project is successful and all putting their money and skills into making it is successful. Um, so yeah, the 70s billing that was gambled um, on Betfair with 2% burns, that would be $1.4 billion burned in a year. That cubic is 2,500 per billion. That would be 560 trillion coins. That isn't even, there isn't even that many coins right now. And it wouldn't, uh, you know, cubic wouldn't, um, it can only grow to one quadrillion, basically. So it'd be, even if cubic was at its max ever supply possible, 560 trillion coins would be burned um, in a year just by handling uh, Betfair's numbers. So you start to see what's going to happen to price. Now, this is important. It's probably cubic. You never know. If they did quotary brilliantly, it could maybe hit the numbers that, that um, uh, Betfair's hit. Now, it's probably unlikely that's going to hit those numbers. But even if it hit 5 billion in a year, even a billion a year, the point here is that you've got to remember that this is one app and there's going to be thousands of apps existing on Cubic. So this is one app that could potentially burn 560 trillion coins, possibly could only burn a trillion coins a year. But if you have a thousand apps burning a trillion coins a year, that's one quadrillion coins burned every year. So I hope you're seeing the potential. I hope you're seeing from that why I'm saying that I think in the future Quorum is going to vote to increase the emissions uh, from 1 trillion a week probably to something like 10 trillion a week um, which then is going to pay miners more and attract more miners and going to power Agart more so I hope you're putting the bigger picture together I'll explain that a bit more in future videos but the point is that one app alone could wipe out the whole supply of Cubic in burns and there's probably going to be thousands of apps on the Cubic network um, so that supply equilibrium is going to be really easy to hit eventually. And then he went on to say, so why is it one of the best business ventures around? Well, 2.5% of the bets goes to the 676 owners of the shares. So that, that's what I was talking about there, the people who bid on these shares at the, the when um, before quarter view was launched. Let's break these numbers down. 70 billion annual betting volume. That's 1.75 billion to the shareholders. If you own um, one share, that's $2.5 million for each shareholder per year. How much does a share now? Around 1.6 billion cubic, so about $4,000. So if you want to buy one share of cubic, it costs you about $4,000. If they can actually make quotary, so this, these 676 people that are working together um, on quotary to make it a success, some of those are probably millionaires already, they could earn 2.5 million per year if it started doing the sort of uh, revenue that um, that Betfair is doing. And this is a tall experiment. Not expecting Quadri to grow as big as Betfair, but it could as the first true decentralized exchange that's decentralized in its ownership as well because it's owned by 676 different people. And it's got 676 different people's skills and all of those people are motivated towards making this a success. So that's mind-boggling when you think about it. And you can buy a share of it for $4,000 right now. And then why it might change gambling forever? Well, these numbers are mostly European figures. Imagine what happens to these numbers when China, Indonesia, Nigeria, USA, India all start to use quotary. You're not bullish enough. Um, now, obviously, there could be regulations around quotary in these countries, but... It's going to be way easier to access because it's a decentralized exchange. Um, so that's a you know just super super interesting point. Then Cryptides went on to share something else, um, and he was just talking about the Cubic uh, roadmap, and I really thought this was interesting as well. So he said he's been looking over to 2024 roadmap, and he said he's slowly released thoughts on different aspects, but one com component really caught his eye: drive crypto partnerships. And he said, "Here's what that might look like." Let's look at probably the most basic option, Uniswap. So cross-chain swaps, developing a bridge to facilitate swaps between the Cubic network and any other um, uh, network already on Uniswap, so like Ethereum. But there's more opportunity with Uniswap. Because of the high speed and large transfers per second via smart contracts, Cubic could act as an intermediary, intermediary to quickly find liquidity and swap calculations. Then OpenSea. This could be a game changer for OpenSea if they want to simultaneously airdrop NFTs to mu millions of users. Utilizing Cubic's uh, TPS speed is a no-brainer. Because 
Cubic's already been proven to be able to do airdrops to millions of people um, in in basically no time. So VeChain, VeChain processes huge amounts of data through IoT devices. Cubic could m- help make this seamless. Filecoin, Cubic could really help the speed of Filecoin so data retrieval is enhanced to make a superior user experience. These, there really are so many options. And remember, if any of these used Cubic network via smart contracts, that that's right, it burns. How was this roadmap not mega bullish for anyone? And then he just goes on to mention about CFB, the, the meme coin that you should check out. But the important thing here that CryptoDs is getting at is this is why Sergey Ivan Chegla calling Cubic a layer zero is because all these other layer ones and, you know, at layer twos or any products out there, they can all connect with Cubic and use the processing power that it has they can use this AI, they can use this oracles, they can use a smart contract speed. Um, and Cubic really has the potential to, to connect the, the whole world. So it's super, super bullish. And he's just throwing out ideas here, but it could be any network or any business really that could, their partnerships could go on. But he's just talking about blockchain partnerships and it's super, super interesting. Um, one last thing that I want to mention as well, it's just on Quadri. So if you think about Quadri, in the bigger picture of what this means for Cubic overall. So the oracles haven't been launched in Cubic right now, but what oracles are is they can connect to real-time data that's going on in the world right now. So they can connect to real-time scores in, in soccer matches, for example. So someone places a bet on Quotary. Quotary then through Cubic's oracles is connected to the outside world. It sees it sees the um, bet that that's uh, or sees the game that the best has been placed on, the minute that result happens, the minute the whistle blows and it says full time, the, the Oracle send that data back to Quotary. Quotary, through a smart contract, instantly settles the bet, pays the winner and settles the bet and closes it. Now imagine if you have a million bets at the same time on Cubic, um, on Quotary, those million bets through Cubic smart contract transfers per second, which is 40 million, it can actually go and sustainably pay out all pay out in all those bets at the same time and and um solve all those smart contracts at the same time. So it's an incredible, credible use case. And this is why we're so bullish on on Cubic. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I'll see you all on the outside. 